as part of many healthcare curriculum designed to teach students to work with patients, they often have students watch the live birth of a child. It's, a, it's miraculous in many ways to see the pains of birth. In our gospel lesson, Jesus explains that what's happening in society is simply the beginning of a birthing process. The beginning of birthing pains. This morning, I'd like to offer just a little bit of comfort to those of us who may be experiencing some anxiety of where we are headed as a society where we are headed as a church in the Anglican Communion, so much has been happening out there. And a lot has been happening in here as well. But the good news is that we are headed for change, the kind of change which God calls for. Some may disagree with me and say we're headed for chaos, we're both right, because out of chaos comes change. Let's take a look at the chaotic birth of a child, the entrance of the newly formed light of God, a manifestation of life in its unpolluted form, bursting through the womb of uncertainty. It is a violent process where the mother and fetus struggle to be separate, but struggle to be close so that they can coexist in the world. Both baby and mother are transformed in that violent process. If you are lucky enough to be in the birthing room during that time, you will witness the transformation of a mother into an unearthly being often screaming and yelling, get this baby out of me! <clears throat> or replying to those who try to comfort her, just shut up, I hate you! <laughs> the pain of this process is an indication of the God-given power of that new light coming into the world. Our political, racial, and economic struggles are in need of a birthing room. Jesus told his disciples, do not be afraid as the stones are being thrown down, as this must happen in order for new life to enter the world. Stones are often the foundation or building blocks of places of great power and influence, often epicenters of corrupt societies or organizations, principalities of darkness, if you will. Corrupt, how? By straying away from God, either by forgetting or just plain old ignoring God's commandments to love one another just as we love ourselves. It's a simple enough concept to understand because love is love. It's what we feel when we see a newborn baby of any type, human or non-human. Yes, as that baby becomes older, that initial love which we felt becomes more challenging to hold on to, mostly because of our implicit biases which we have about one another. Our morals, our values in which we've grown up with, which often cause us to become blind to the light of God in every person who made that tumultuous journey through that birth canal. It's as if we have put on special glasses, which only allows us to see one specific wavelength of light in that spectrum of life. We can easily see the light of others who look, speak, and behave as we do, and often treat them with love and 
admiration that we did with the newborn baby. But for others, that light is harder to see. Perhaps it is those building blocks of life which creates, created foundations of wealth and privilege and entitlement which keeps us from seeing the full spectrum of God's light in those around us, even those who are us. I recall needing some new light bulbs around the house and going to Home Depot to purchase them. Upon arrival to the section for bulbs, somehow things had changed. And light was no longer just light. It had become proprietary. Now, unique in design and profitable for someone somewhere, we had choice and could discriminate. There was warm light, soft light, LED light, and just a few boxes of incandescent light, the light whose humble beginning just couldn't allow it to compete with the new bulbs of life. So confusing it was. But what I found was that you can choose light according to what makes you feel comfortable and just stick with that. On the surface, it seemed like the way to go, a good idea, but what I found was that some light was not good to read with, and other light will make you sleepy, and still others will make you feel more energized. So in essence, we need all of them to really feel comfortable. Then why can't we see that we need to light from all of God's children to really feel comfortable. I listened to a podcast on WHYY radio where Eliza Griswold, the daughter of our former presiding bishop, Frank Griswold, spoke about the struggles of the church to see the full spectrum of light among its members during the time when he was in office. I think that was in the 90s. She talked about how the various schisms within the church at the time caused the very foundational walls of our Episcopal church to crumble and break into factions, which are still present today. Can you imagine issues of the 90s still being present in churches today? Surely, our society and church should have advanced. After all, we have people living in space. Yet, let there be no mistake, Elijah's message was that people are continuing to leave the pews relatively empty and searching for a different type of God, who is less complicated and more available, why? Because we as Christians are talking about a loving God, but failing to emulate the love of God by embracing the full spectrum of light in the world. I mean, God's people with all of their cultural diversity, our vision has been skewed. I guess the light in the churches of today is no longer comfortable. Perhaps it's simply a sign of the need for the pains of rebirth to come. So prepare the room. Set up the stirrups. We may even hear mothers scream out, I hate you, before reaching her arms out to cradle the new life in the church. Whatever comes out of the chaos of rebirth, it will be God's will. So be happy. A change is going to come. 
What will the new life look like after the walls come crumbling down? What type of light will it be? Or more important, what type of light will we see rising up out of the chaos? Just remember, the light of God shines in many wavelengths, so don't forget them. They are our siblings. Amen.